Hello and welcome everyone to this What's New webinar. First of all, I would like to thank all of our customers who again had a great share in this new release of the DocuPerformer. A lot of great feature requests were submitted to us in the last month and we are so proud that many of these ideas of our customers got introduced with this new version. Today I would like to show you the highlights. My name is Malta Haring, I'm product owner here at Blutelligence and I have the pleasure to walk you through this webinar today. I always recommend to check out our user manual as well. We updated it with all the new functionalities. This means here you will find the news functionalities, how they work and how they are supposed to be used. Okay, what's new in 20.1? Let's start with, with some general improvements. I'm proud to announce that for the first time ever, we support Zap Analytics Cloud as a new component. In the first beta version, you will be able to connect the Docker Performer to your SAC system, synchronize your stories, do commenting on your stories and create the automatic documentations. You are even allowed to add them to your scenarios, which means that the cross-system documentation approach is even more complemented by this. Here you can see a short screenshot. I will show this in a live demo later on. Basically what you can see here is a connected system to the SAC and you can see the stories with all the technical information in the entity grid already, just like you are used to for all the other objects in the other systems. Another great feature which we introduce with this new version is the Confluence integration. This means from now on, you can export your documentations from DocuPerformer straight to Confluence. A lot of customers use Confluence as their centralized documentation platform. So for us, it only made sense to introduce DocuPerformer to this new platform. It's easy setting up the spaces and, and pages where you want to integrate your documentation, and you can easily choose this option via your export. I will show you later on how this works in detail. This is an example that you can see uh, an exported documentation of a multi-provider. On the left side, you can see the space test DP confluence, and we have a page tree, which is first of all showing the system ID and also the structure of the multi-provider and its documentation. Please be aware that in the first beta version, we simply export the Word document itself and place it on the respective page which you entered. Nevertheless, the full functionality of Confluence is given, meaning you can search the document and so on. Okay, let me show you how this works in DocuPerformer. So I'm going to open the application. First of all, you will notice that we have a new component when you select your systems, in this case, the SAC system, and you can simply double click on it to connect. Before the initial setup, you need to do some administration settings. This means you need to configure your SAC connection. For this, we basically need two URLs of the authorization URL and the token URL and also the system ID. To find out more about the setup of the SAC connection, you can use our user manual where it's perfectly described how you can find the settings of your respective SAC system and where you can find the respective information to do the setup in Docker Performer. Okay, once you have set it up, you are able to synchronize. First of all, in the beta version, we only support stories, but more object types will follow. I've done this already. This means I can find all my SAC stories here in, in the entity grid. I also want to show you the Confluence integration. So what we are gonna do now is we're gonna create a documentation of an SAC story, and we're gonna place it and export it to Confluence. For this, I simply open the context menu on the SAC story. I go to create documentation, and what you will notice now that there is an additional option to export the doc file to Confluence. So let's start. And then you will see what you are used to, right? The document generation window. But in this case, we didn't export the document to a shared point or to a specific folder on your laptop. We simply have the document placed on a defined Confluence page. Let me open it. So whenever you're using the link, you're 
getting straight to the documentation which you simply uh, just created. And also here we see that the structure of the page tree is added automatically. This is the page parent um, I defined in the setup, which I will show you soon. Then we have one page for the SAC system, and then we have the documentation itself of a single story. As you can see, I can easily browse and search the information of the technical object. To do so, you also need to do some administration tasks first. You need to configure the Confluence integration. This can easily be done by giving the Confluence URL, which you have in place in your company. Then you define the space where you want to add the stories to. And then you define a parent page where all the documentations need to run. Additionally, of course, we need a Confluence username and a password. Once everything is set up right, you can test the connection and you will get the confirmation that everything is working fine. Once you have configured it, you're ready to go and centralize your documentations even further. Okay, let's jump back to the presentation. For SAC and Confluence, of course, this is just the start. You see, they're both kind of a beta version, but additionally, we are working on some great stuff here. So we're gonna add more details into the story documentation. We are also gonna do some where used analysis options so you can analyze which stories are using which queries as database, for example. You can also analyze the stories in the BW data flow as you are used to for the BO objects already. It will be possible to analyze and compare stories and we will even support further object types like users, groups, authorizations and models. For Confluence, we are planning the integration of scenarios, meaning we also want you to export scenarios and not simply single object documentation. And it only makes sense to complete the way and also make the automation tool ready for your automatic documentation and also offer Confluence here as an export target. All right, what else changed? We added the way used analysis in scenarios. This is the first time that we are combining analysis results with our documentation approach. This means for single objects in your scenarios, you can define a way used analysis, which results then show up in the document itself. This gets your documentation approach even a step further. You're not only listing the technical details to the objects, but you're also listing the dependencies to other objects. And this always in the real-time approach whenever you are creating the documentation. This is how it looks like. So in a scenario, you can select single objects, and then you have an additional option now, which is called export where used analysis results. You can configure the way used analysis. This means you can define in which other objects the usage should be searched, for example, in reporting elements or in other info providers or even in ABAP coding. And based on your definition, the export results will show in the documentation. This is how it looks like. So you will get an additional chapter in your documentation, which is showing you a table of the way used analysis results. All right, let's go to specific improvements. First of all, let's talk about BW. What changed here? For the first time, it's possible to analyze and compare transformations. And not only based on the technical name, but rather on the detailed mapping of the single fields. This means you will have an insight on each field of the target structure and how the mapping looked like. And this even with detailed information, meaning we are showing you the field routines, formulas, master data and DSO reads, and so on. How does it look like? Well, here you see a build up. So you have two uh, transformations in comparison mode here, and you can see that we are showing the single mappings, the green values for the direct assignments, but also the constant values, formulas, and routines. It's even possible to look at the field routines on the coding level. All right. The same improvement was done for ABAP CDS views, meaning it's now possible to analyze and compare ABAP CDS views based on the data definitions and the access control. This is a big advantage because now you can compare two ABAP CDS views based on their structure without having a detailed look into the coding. 
The field definition is displayed in a simple structured way and you can see differences quite easily uh, regarding the technical name of a field, the type definition or even the length. As you are used to, the Docker Performer offers the option to highlight all differences so it's easy to catch up. We also improve the compare entities of system analysis function. You might be used to it, so what did we do? We improved the user interface to make it even more user-friendly. And it's now supported for more object types. The compare entities of system function simply gives you the option to see which objects of the selected type are existing in system A, which of them are existing in system B, and which of the entities are existing in both systems. And you can even do it a little step further. You can even compare entities which exist in both system by their metadata. All right, what else? We improved our ABAP lookup scan in the data flows and it's now working amazingly 85% faster. If you're familiar with this function, you know, whenever a data model is quite huge and has a lot of transformations in it, then it took quite some time to do the ABAP code scan for lookups. Now expect these results to show up 85% faster than usual. This is especially useful for these huge data models. Then we did some further smaller improvements for BW. You will notice with the new release that we changed the icon. We aligned the design a little bit to the Eclipse approach. So if you're working already with Eclipse in the modeling area, then you will be familiar with the new icons shown. Then uh, we added new columns to the entity grid. It's now possible to filter by created by and by the package name of the objects. Also, a nice feature in the data flow analysis is that transformations can be now assigned to a layer. For translation, we also did some additional improvements. If you're not familiar, this is the module which allows you to translate metadata descriptions in a mass functionality based on a dictionary. And it's now possible to add straight from the DocuPerformer Entity Grid objects to this translation add-on. This means you can use the full functionality of the grid with all, the, with all its filters. You can select multiple or single objects and by a context menu, you can simply add them to the translation module to translate the metadata descriptions in whatever is needed. Okay, now let's jump to BO. We added a completely new where used analysis to the BO component. From now on, it's possible that you scan the entire BO system for certain keywords or components, meaning you can enter a simple string and the Docker performer searches all the BO coding for these uh, usages. The search tool will find direct usages as in components. You can find the usage in codings, for example, in an event, and you can uh, see what the usage in data sources looks like. This is quite massive and I would like to show you this functionality later on in the demo. What else changed? Now it's also possible to look at simple properties of singular components of the Lumira reports. So it's not even possible to show the buildup of a Lumira report, but now with the context menu, you can simply click on a certain component which you're interested in and you can easily access the property settings of this specific component. Let me show you later on how this works. It's now also possible to compare BO entities of systems. You are used to this functionality from BW side, right? So it's possible to see which objects of a type exist in system A, which objects of a type exist in system B, and where are both systems in common regarding the objects. This is now also possible for BO reports, like Meaning Design Studio and Lumira reports, and also the Webby reports and so on. Okay, let me show you some of the functionalities. First of all, I would like to show you how the properties of components can be analyzed. Let me quickly connect to my BO system here. And I would now like to analyze a certain Lumira document. Let's, for example, take this one, AK test one. I will start analyzing this by using the context menu and go to analyze and compare. The tool is now building up the structure of this Lumira report. 
and is showing me what, the, what it consists of. But from now on, with this new release, I can do it even a step further. To get into details of certain components, I can simply use the context menu again and select the option Show Properties. By this, I get a pop-up which is showing me in a structured way what the properties of the certain components look like. And it doesn't stop here. We are even allowed to export those to Excel to share it with some other people. Let me close this for now. Okay, what else? I also want to show you the way used analysis. So I'm starting the way used analysis and now I have the option to search for certain string words or for certain components. Let me start by searching for a HANA composite provider uh, and I would like to see where it is used in the BO coding. So this is the technical name of my HANA composite provider and I'm starting the BO scan. As you can see, this is only available for Lumira and Design Studio reports so far. Let's start the analysis. What you get is the result list, which is showing you that the technical name of the composite provider is used in different objects. Here, we have it used in certain components and applications as a data source. But not only here, we have also some Graphomet extensions to the Lumira dashboard, which are using the HANA Composite Provider as a reference. Here we can see that the HANA Composite Provider is used in a scorecard. Uh, it seems to be somewhere in the coding. And I can even display the coding to see where exactly it is used. And it's even being highlighted for me, so it's easy to find where this string is referenced. Okay, let's for example enter a name of a certain component, in this case, button one. Again, I get a complete list of where this component is used in other Lumira documents. Let's jump back to the presentation for now. And let's have a look what improvements we offer for HANA. For HANA, it's now possible to do the way used analysis for multiple entities. This was already available for BW entities, but not for HANA. From now on, it's may, way more convenient to select multiple entities of the HANA and analyze them all at the same time to check where these selected entities are used. This is how it looks like. So on the left side, you can simply select all the entities you want to analyze. In the result list, you will see which object is used in which other object in what way. Okay, what else? Now it's also possible for HANA data flows or network graphics of the data model to export them into your documentation in scenarios. This as well was already possible for info provider in the BW component, but now we are offering this solution also for the HANA calculation views for HANA CDS views. This is always nice because it enriches your documentation with a nice graphical data flow to get an overview of the complete structure. This is how it looks like. So in scenarios, you now have the options when selecting HANA entities to export data flow as network graphic. And then the document you generate will contain this nice graphical overview of a data model. Now let's have a look into the future. What can you expect in version 22, our next release? So currently we are working on several improvements. We definitely going to work on the Kint Confluence integration. As you know, this is for now a beta version. However, we will improve it to integrate the scenario export and also to make Confluence available for our automation tool. For SAC, we will support further object types. We will make first analysis, uh, where use analysis options possible. And then we're going to provide new functions regarding the interactions between HANA and BW. So the interaction between these two systems is since BW on HANA and BW for HANA use quite much. And we want to offer you to enhance your analysis and cross-system documentation even further. So be excited that you will, for example, in a data flow, see which HANA entities are consumed by a composite provider and so on. Okay, and then an additional feature which we're offering in future is the export and import of scenarios. By this, I don't mean the export and import of documents which are created from scenarios, but it's rather a raw data export of a scenario. 
we had several cases where the customers were interested in exporting their already created scenarios to another DocuPerformer instance with another database below. This will be available in future. Okay. If you saw something which you would try out yourself, for example, the SAC component, then contact us. We always give you the option to show you the functionalities in another web session in more detail. And you are always able to apply for a test license to see what these new features are all about. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, we currently don't offer uh, on-site presentations. However, we have quite a good infrastructure to show you all functionalities in our web sessions. Feel free to contact us. I'm happy to hear from you and I hope you enjoyed today's What's New webinar. See you soon. Bye-bye.